This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to our morning prayers from St. Peter's Church in Ipswich. If it's your birthday today, I do wish you a happy birthday and hope that you enjoy your special day. Our readings today are Psalm 119, verse 153 to the end, and Luke chapter 9, verses 37 to 50. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all blessings flow, by whose providence we are kept and by whose grace we are di directed. Help us through the example of your servant, Thomas Ken, faithfully to keep your word, humbly to accept adversity and steadfastly to worship you. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A little information on Thomas Ken, who was the Bishop of Bath and Wells in the 17th century, and also wrote hymns, one of which was Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. He was imprisoned in the Tower of London for a brief period after Charles II died because he wanted to be released by King James II from reading the Royal Declaration for Liberty of Conscience. Conscience. So, now that I have ignited your interest, look him up and find out about him for yourself. Thomas Ken. And our first reading is Psalm 119, verses 153 to the end. Look on my suffering and deliver me, for I have not forgotten your law. Defend my cause and redeem me. Preserve my life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek out your decrees. Your compassion, Lord, is great. Preserve my life according to your laws. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statutes. I look on the faithless with loathing, for they do not obey your word. See how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your love. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. Sin and Shin. Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise, like one who finds great spoil. I hate and detest falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for all my ways are known to you. May my cry come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word, 
for all your commands are righteous. May your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, Lord, and your law gives me delight. Let me live that I may praise you, and may your laws sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The theme of this whole psalm is God's word is true and wonderful. Stay true to God and his word, no matter how bad the world becomes. Obedience to God's laws is the only way to achieve real happiness. The psalmist's confidence in God's word is unbounded and he fully understands the law. And to see it broken genuinely distresses him. We possessed far more of God's word than the psalmist did but his love and regard for it often puts us to shame. How can we overcome that? One of God's characteristics is truthfulness. He embodies perfect truth. Therefore, his word cannot lie. It is true and dependable. The Bible is completely true and trustworthy. The world hates Christians because Christian values differ from the world's. Because Christ followers don't cooperate with the world by joining in their sin. They are living accusations against the world's immorality. The world follows Satan's agenda and Satan is the avowed enemy of Jesus and his people. The follower of Christ become sanctified, set apart for sacred use, cleansed and made holy through believing and obeying the word of God. He or she has already accepted forgiveness through Christ's sacrificial death. The daily application of God's word has a purifying effect on our minds and hearts. Scripture points out sin motivates us to confess, renews our relationship with Christ and guides us back to the right place. Verse 60, 165 says, Great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble. Modern society longs for peace of mind. Here is a clear cut instruction on how to attain this. If we love God and obey his laws, we will all have great peace. Trusting God, who alone stands above the pressures of daily life and gives us full assurance. Patient Strong writes, We can't expect fine weather and good fortune all the way. The clouds will come, the storms will break, and the sky will turn to grey. But when you are looking at a cloud that's thick and black and wide, don't forget the sun is shining on the other side. Amen. And our next reading is Luke chapter 9, verse 37 to 50. Luke chapter 9. Verse 37 to 50. Jesus heals a demon possessed boy. The next day, when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met him. A man in the crowd called out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. A spirit seizes him and he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsions so that he foams at the mouth. It scarcely ever leaves him and is destroying him. 
I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. Even while the son was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the impure spirit, healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. Jesus predicts his death for the second time. While everyone was marveling at all that Jesus did, he said to his disciples, listen carefully to what I am about to tell you. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand what he meant. It was hidden from them so that they did not grasp it and they were afraid to ask him about it. The disciples argue about who would be the greatest. An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and made it beside him. Then he said to them, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is least among you all who is the greatest. The disciples forbid, forbid another to use Jesus' name. Master, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For whoever is not against you is for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the disciples came down from the mountain with Jesus, they passed from a reassuring experience of God's presence to a frightening experience of evil. The beauty of what they had seen must have made the ugliness seem even uglier. Why couldn't the disciples drive out the evil spirit? They had managed to do that while on their mission around the villages. Why not now? Perhaps they had had special authority on their trip. Or perhaps their faith was faltering. As our spiritual vision improves and allows us to see and understand God better, we will also be able to see and understand evil better. We would be overcome by its horror if we did not have Jesus with us to take us through it safely. The battle with Satan is difficult, ongoing struggle. Victory over sin and temptation comes through faith in Jesus Christ, not through our own effort. We should not be afraid to confront evil and suffering, no matter how ugly or horrible, Jesus will be with us. When Jesus predicted his suffering and death, the disciples did not grasp the spiritual meaning of his words. Though they had eyes, they could not see. Though they had ears, they could not hear. Though they had minds, they could not understand. They were spiritually blind, deaf and dull. In truth, they did not want to hear what Jesus was saying because they were afraid of losing their dreams and not fulfilling their worldly ambition. So they totally misunderstood what Jesus had said. They fully expected Jesus to become a glorious ruler with power and honour. And as they made their way to Jerusalem, they began arguing as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and made him stand beside him. Then he said to them, Whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, 
and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is the least among you all who is the greatest. The word welcomes is repeated four times in verse 48. It means to accept the presence of a person with friendliness. It means to respect them, appreciate them and be glad to see them. When we are welcomed in this way by others, we feel good. This attitude of welcoming is not based on the benefit others give or the merit they have. It is acceptance of the person themselves. It is to acknowledge their values simply because they are human beings made in God's image. This welcoming attitude comes from having a mindset of Jesus. Jesus welcomed anyone and everyone who came to him. Jesus never discriminated on the basis of age, gender, race, social status, or any other human distinctiveness. If we have a big heart like Jesus, we too can welcome anyone and everyone. We read in verses 49 to 50, the disciples forbade this man to drive out demons in Jesus' name because he is not one of us. The disciples were jealous too, plain and simple. Nine of them together had been unable to drive out a single spirit and they told the man to stop. Our pride is hurt when someone else succeeds where we have failed. However, we need to listen to what Jesus teaches us because he, he says there is no room for jealousy in the spiritual warfare of his kingdom. We should share Jesus' open-armed attitude towards Christian workers who may not be in our group. We should rejoice when they are able to bring people to Christ, just as the unknown man did. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, you tell us in the Bible that whatever wrong we have done, you tread down our faults to the bottom of the sea. We know there is no need to keep thinking about what we have done in the past because you pardon the wrongs we have done and you delight in showing mercy. You bind up all our wounds and you renew us by your love. Lord, you love all that you have made and it is in your very nature to love and forgive. Lead us to be generous in accepting and forgiving others in the same way as you accept and forgive us. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for our churches in Ipsley Parish, St Peter's, Christchurch and St John's. We give thanks that we are more and more able to attend services in our church buildings more and more. We pray that everyone suffering from COVID will recover well and have no long-lasting effects afterwards. We ask that we would be able to discern, through your grace, new outreach and mission opportunities. We ask that our leaders would seek your will for how we can work together and for all confrontation to stop. We need to raise up more leaders, Lord. Please enable our ministers to teach us as you once taught and to show love compassion and understanding all who enter our buildings. May we grow to love one another as you have loved us, as, and may we live in harmony with all our neighbours, seeking only to do your will, focused on building your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, 
We pray for our friends and family who are ill at this time. Whether it is a long-term chronic illness or they have COVID or an illness of any kind, we commend them to your compassionate regard. Comfort them upon their sickbed and ease their suffering. No healing is too hard for you, Lord, if it is your will. Help them to find peace and calming inner thoughts. Hold them safe, Lord, and may they put their trust in you. We therefore pray that you bless our friends with your loving care. Renew their strength and heal what ails them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, embrace all those whose hearts today overflow with grief, unanswered questions, and a sense of loss. We pray especially for the family of friends of Edna Thompson. We pray for those who mourn, Noreen and Tony as they mourn for Michael Coleman, and Erica Dilger as she mourns for her mom. Grant them space to express their tears. Please keep and carry these precious people in their sadness and loss. Cover them with your great wings of love. Give their weary hearts rest and their minds sound sleep. Lord, lift their eyes so that they may catch a glimpse of eternity and be comforted by the promise of heaven. For those who comfort, be in both the words they use and all that's left unspoken. Fill each heart with love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, whose own suffering brought us life here and for eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Please accept the prayers we offer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God grant to the world justice, truth and peace. Amen. I do thank you for joining me this morning. I do hope you'll be able to join us again tomorrow. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 